Good morning. It's good to be with you. Um, although I wish I could be there, uh, be with you in person, and we could be at the church together, worshiping together. Uh, we're obviously not able to do that right now, uh, but I'm thankful that we have this technology that we can still share together. We can still um, teach and preach and sing worship music together and have that fellowship together, although we can't see one another. Um, but I'm thankful, again, for the technology. I'm not an old hand at this. This is not something, this is out of my comfort zone, but um, I pray that you would just bear with me. Uh, as you can tell, I'm not live streaming. I don't have the ability to do that. We don't have the internet speed here at our home to live stream. Uh, so I will be simply pre-recording and uploading my messages uh, whenever uh, I'm asked to, to teach. Uh, I'd like to uh, start us out with a word of prayer. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to teach your word, Lord, to open it up, to worship with those out there who may be listening this morning. Uh, God, I pray that, God, you would just have your way with this message. Uh, God, that, uh, Lord, we would grow together and we would worship together this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we're going to be in the book of Exodus, chapter 24. Uh, my Sunday school class and I have been uh, going through the book of Exodus for a number of weeks now, and we're up to uh, chapter 24. We were going into chapter 25 before uh, everything came to a halt there at the church. We... Um, I do pray that you don't disconnect with me because you were not with us in the first 23 or four chapters because God has a word for us today. And this is a great starting point uh, because chapter 24 is a uh, transition period uh, that we see in the book of Exodus. Uh, we, we, we move from deliverance. Uh, the, and, and, and Exodus is the greatest book of deliverance in the Old Testament. We, in the previous chapters, we we see we 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 um, we we saw how uh, the Israelites were 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 delivered from the from the bond, their bondage in in Egypt. Uh, they were slaves there for over four hundred years, and and God delivered them. And now we see that 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 God is going to um, uh, covenant with them. There's going to be a covenant relationship, and uh, and so that's where we are in this chapter. And you know, the the with the deliverance of of, of Israel from Egypt, uh, they God God say that God heard their cries, uh, their their pleas for help, and and God answered those cries, and God saved them from an evil king, from an evil nation, um, and and now He desires to have a covenant relationship with them. It's much like our own salvation. You know, when, when God saves, uh, God desires a relationship after salvation. And God desired a relationship with his people uh, at this time in history. Uh, and he had a very special purpose for this people, just like he has a very sp special purpose for us today as Christians. We see two different types of covenants in the Old Testament. Uh, we see, and, and the New Testament as well, we see the, the unconditional covenants. For example, uh, with the covenant with Abraham, that was an unconditional covenant, meaning that there were no conditions on Abraham at that time. It was, it was all God. God said, I, I, God made the promise to Abraham, and God would keep that promise. It required nothing from Abraham. Um, and God, God promised Abraham that, that, uh, that, nations, all nations would come from him, um, that uh, his people uh, would occupy the promised land, Canaan. Uh, he made fabulous promises to Abraham, and, and God kept those promises. Uh, and now, and also with us, under the, under the new covenant that we're under with Christ Jesus, uh, we, we are uh, under an unconditional covenant. Uh, we, we can't lose our salvation. Uh, uh, once we, we believe in Christ with our heart and we confess him with our mouth, we're forever saved. We can't lose that. It's unconditional. God's made that promise uh, that, that, uh, that we've been redeemed. Uh, so we see that kind of covenant in the, in the, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, but, but we also see unconditional, I mean, I'm sorry, conditional covenants as well in the Old Testament. And one of those covenants that's, that's conditional is the one that we're looking at today in Exodus 24. It's conditioned on the people uh, uh, doing what they're supposed to do because a covenant would be between two parties. Uh, and this, in this situation, it was between God and between the people of Israel. 
And God certainly is going to keep his end of the deal, but the people of Israel also had to keep their own. And God made it very clear to them that uh, in order for, for, for them to, um, uh, to be blessed in this covenant, they had to keep the law. And the law is, is reflected in chapters 20, 21, 22, and 23. We see the Ten Commandments, and then we see these ordinances, these, these other laws uh, that are just uh, for everyday life. And, uh, and all that together, collectively, uh, is, 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 part of that, is part of that covenant agreement and uh, that the, the Israelites would, would promise to keep. And, and over in chapter 19, uh, prior to the Ten Commandments, uh, you know, God speaks to Moses, and he, and he says this to Moses, uh, again, prior to the covenant. Uh, now then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession among all the peoples, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the sons of Israel. See, God told Moses, he's, look, there's gonna, I'm going to make a covenant with, with, with the nation of Israel. Uh, and if they will obey me, I will bless them. Uh, and then we see in verse 8 of chapter 19, all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord had spoken, we will do. And Moses brought back the words of the people to the Lord. Before they even knew what the covenant was, was about, before they even had the, the commandments, before they ever had the ordinances, before they ever had the law, they, they were already excited about doing whatever it was God, God would, would ask them to do. Uh, but again, if they didn't keep the law and they didn't keep it, then judgment would fall upon them. Uh, and we see that, uh, over in Deuteronomy, uh, we see scripture there in Deuteronomy chapter 28, uh, and it really lays this out. Uh, listen to what, uh, what, what we, what we, what Moses writes in, in Deuteronomy 28 in verses, uh, one through six, we see the blessing again, of obeying God. Now it shall be, if you diligently obey the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments, which I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the offspring of your body and the produce of your ground and the offspring of your beast the increase of your herd and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. What a blessing, all hinging upon obedience, uh, all hinged upon obedience. And then we see what will happen if uh, there's the consequences of disobedience. Also in that same chapter, Deuteronomy 28, beginning in verse 15, Listen to this word, but it shall come about if you do not obey the Lord your God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes with which I charge you today, then all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in the city and cursed shall you be in the country. Cursed shall you be, shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed shall be the offspring of your body and the produce of your ground, the increase of your herd and the young of your flock. Curse shall you be when you come in, and curse shall you be when you go out. But, but there's a little more here I want to read. The Lord will send upon you curses, confusion, and rebuke in all you undertake to do until you are destroyed and until you're, you perish quickly on account of the evil of the deeds because you have forsaken me. The Lord will make the pestilence cling to you until he has consumed you from the land where you are entering to possess. The Lord will smite you with consumption and with fever and with inflammation and with fiery heat and with a sword and with blight and with mildew and they will pursue you until you perish. Wow, what a word from the God. Um, blessings come with obedience. Curses come with disobedience. You know, as Christians, we're under the new covenant. It's different. Uh, uh, you know, our, our, our covenant is unconditional. Uh, you know, God's love and, 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 and salvation uh, and our salvation through the blood of Christ 
is is not going is 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 unconditional. There's nothing that we can do to to lose that love or to lose our salvation. God will never forsaken us. Forsake us. Uh, he tells us that in His Word. Uh, but we clearly see, though, in Deuteronomy, God's attitude um, and judgment toward a people who forsake Him, who deny Him, uh, and deny the truth of His Word, and what we see is great suffering, and we see great hopelessness that comes from that kind of ungodliness. And frankly, we see that all over the world today. We see a lost world out there that's suffering greatly in this hopelessness that they're in uh, because they have denied God. Not only are they just simply disobedient, they have completely denied God. Going back to the Israelites, um, God promised to make Israel a, a kingdom, uh, a priest, a, a holy nation. Uh, and that I read in, in, in chapter 19, verse 6 uh, of Exodus. Uh, they were to be a, a light in a, in a dark world, and they were to be separate. To, they were to be called out. Uh, they were to, to, to um, uh, show the world uh, uh who God is. Uh, they were to show the world that they worship Yahweh, the Lord. Uh, they received the law that was to be the, the schoolmaster that, that pointed uh, the way uh, uh, to Christ. And, and we see that in Galatians. Paul writes in Galatians chapter 3, verse 24 and 25. He writes, Therefore the law has become our tutor to lead us to Christ. That's exactly what the law was doing even back here in the book of Exodus. It was, it was pointing the way to Christ because no one could keep the law. They, need, they needed a Savior, just as we need the Savior today. Uh, and that scripture goes on in Galatians, so that we may be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. Praise God that we're no longer under the law. We're under grace. And we have this unconditional covenant because of what Jesus Christ has done for us at Calvary. Um, so the law would, would show people their, their sinfulness and their, and their need for a Savior. Uh, and, 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 and again, praise God that Jesus Christ came and he fulfilled the law completely. Uh, and, and now you and I uh, are found just before God because of Christ. Um, and just as the people of Israel were to, to bear that light, uh, in their day, we're to bear that light today. We're to bear that light of Christ, and 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 we're we are to uh, uh, allow we are to allow God to work through us and 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 draw people unto Himself through the life that we live uh, as lights of Christ. Uh, and 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 you know that the law back in this day it, it was it was still pointing to Christ, and the and the nation of Israel was chosen to bear that law. For that time in history. Now I want to read the first uh, few verses in, in Exodus chapter 24, uh, verses 1 through 3. Uh, just follow with me. Uh, then he said to Moses, uh, this is God speaking, then he said to Moses, come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and you shall worship, worship at a distance. Moses alone, however, shall come near to the Lord, and they shall not come near nor shall the people come up with him. Then Moses came and recounted to the people all the words of the Lord and all the ordinances, and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord has spoken, we will do. Now, you know, this starts out talking about how the elders and how Moses was going to come up on the mountain, but prior to them coming up on the mountain, as we'll see, uh, Moses comes off the mountain to the people, and he presents all the words to, of the Lord, all the words that, that he has received, all the ordinances, the laws. He brings those out. Now, now the people know what God expects of them, uh, and and. And what do the people answer? How do they answer? Again, just like they did in chapter 19, they said, we'll do it. We will do. Uh, we will follow the Lord. Um, and it's important for us to remember, you know, with, with, uh, 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 with a covenant with God, uh, just like this one with the Israelites, uh, not only must the covenant be heard, but it must be responded to. Uh, and that's what the people were doing. Yes, Lord, we will follow you. You know, when we entered into a covenant relationship uh, through the blood of Christ, 
uh, we had to uh, we had to uh, respond to that. We had to uh, uh, with our voice uh, 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 declare uh, to God that we we by faith believe in the Lord Jesus Christ that He died for our sins at Calvary that He rose again from the grave. We don't not only believe in our heart uh, the word, but we we voice it. Uh, and, uh, and that's what the Israelites were doing here. And it's done freely. There's no force here. Uh, it's done freely. And who wouldn't want uh, to, to, to uh, enter into this kind of covenant relationship? Um, uh, you know, with a, with a, with a, with a God who, is, who has saved us. Uh, the Israelites were, were saved from their bondage. We were saved from our bondage. Uh, why in the world would we not uh, immediately desire to enter into to, to a relationship with, with God, a relationship with Jesus Christ, our Savior? The, uh, in, in verses um, 4 through 8, uh, let's read on in chapter 24. Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. Then he arose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain with 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel. He sent young men of the sons of Israel, and they offered burnt offerings and sacrificed young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and the other half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant, and he read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do, and we will be obedient. So Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Um, first, we look at, at, at first, the first thing I want to look at here in, in, in this section of Scripture is that Moses put God's word words into writing. And this is the book of covenant. And, and we see it described that way in verse seven. It's the book of the covenant. Uh, and it, it is to be, a, it was to be, and it is a permanent and accurate uh, recording of what God expected of his people, what God said and what God expected uh, and what he expected to be taught uh, from generation to generation. Uh, it, it is like his word today that, that we are so blessed with. Uh, God has given us his word. It is a true and accurate word of God. And, and God expects us not only to, to feed on it, to feast on it ourselves, but to teach it to our children and our grandchildren and to all who will listen. Uh, it is to be passed down, this word, from generation uh, to generation. Um, and, and now we also see in, in this selection of Scripture, we see uh, the, the ratifying or the, or the formalizing of this covenant agreement between God and, and his people, the Israelites. And what is the first thing that, that we see here uh, in, in the word? We see, uh, we see that there's an altar built. Uh, the first requirement uh, that uh, is that the nation go to the altar and offer sacrifices. Uh, and, and the altar we see is built with 12 stones, with each stone uh, representing one of the tribes of Israel. And, uh, and that symbolized the, the entire nation uh, uh, coming together at the altar and, and making sacrifices to God. Um, and, 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 and that's so important because while this was a, a, a covenant with the nation of Israel, it, it, it was very much a covenant with each person in the nation of Israel. Uh, so we never should lose sight of that. Uh, God, it, God wanted a relationship with each individual, just like he wants that relationship today. Uh, it, it's not that he just looks at an entire collective group of people. Uh, he desires a relationship with me, just like he desires a relationship with you, although collectively we are his church. Uh, and that's what we see here in the, in the book of Exodus. And then at the altar, uh, what do we read about? We see that there, there are burnt offerings and, and, uh, and peace offerings uh, made to God. Uh, and and, and those, those burnt offerings uh, uh, were entirely to God, where they would, we would put the, the bull, or the lamb, the goat on the altar and burn it down to ashes. And that was all for God. And, and then we see the the peace offerings where where the where the animals would be placed on the altar and uh and and the fat from the animals would be for God and they would be burned up on the altar 
and the other uh, the other parts of the animal would be eaten by the people. Uh, and these were all uh, uh, offerings made uh, to finalize that covenant relationship with, with God and the people of Israel. Uh, and then there's the blood. And, and wow, uh, how, how the blood must have flowed uh, on that day. And, and we see that uh, in, in, in verse 6. Um, as, and, and, and so there was the blood that was, that was uh, from the bulls and the goats and the sheep, and it was sprinkled on the altar. And, and, and we know from, from Hebrews 9.22, for without the blood, there can be no forgiveness of sin. And, and without the blood, there can be no covenant with God. It requires blood, the blood. Um, and, uh, it, 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 and, and what, a, what a vivid reminder to the Israelites and to us that, that the source of God's forgiveness and, and acceptance comes by the blood. And, and we need that reminder today. The Israelites needed that reminder from generation to generation. And it all pointed, for them, it pointed to Christ. For us, it points back to what Christ has already done for us. But it's all through the blood. Uh, and, and we see that uh, the, old covenant, uh, uh, contra the Old Covenant also uh, pointed to a greater covenant to come. Uh, it, it's the covenant that you and I as believers in Christ are, are bound by today, and 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 this new covenant that that we live under, that we we are a part of today, uh, we see a very similar pattern uh, to this covenant that we read about in the book of Exodus. A very similar pattern, and uh, it, it began um, as it did in the book of covenant in, in the book of of Exodus in the old in the old covenant with the reading of the word. And uh, you remember Moses came down off the mountain and he and he told them. Uh, he, he, he wrote down the, the words of God and he read it to the people. And, and, uh, and with me and with you, if, if, you know, uh, as Christians, it began with, with the word uh, being read to us or uh, we read it ourselves. It was preached to us. It was taught to us. Somebody loved us enough to tell us about Jesus Christ. And so it all begins with a, with the reading of the word. And, uh, and then it, it, it's, about receiving the word as the truth of God, just as the the Israelites said, we we believe we will do it. Uh, that's exactly how you and I came into that covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. We heard the word, uh, and and we we responded uh, from our heart and from our mouth uh, as we trusted in in Jesus Christ. Uh, but there's also that sacrifice that had to be made. And, uh, and, and, and again, praise God for you and I, that sacrifice had already been made at Calvary 2,000 years ago. And, and when Christ shed his blood for us, uh, as that final and that complete sacrifice. In Mark 14, 24, Jesus uh, told his disciples there at the, at the final Passover meal, uh, he said, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many it was poured out for me and it was poured out for you. Uh, we came to God by the blood of the lamb um, and we are sealed as his possession uh, by his blood. And, and this covenant was sealed and these people were sealed in this covenant by the blood. It's by the blood that we come to God in a covenant relationship. Now, we see in verses 9 through 11 that... Uh, that, uh, well, let's just read those verses together. Then Moses went up uh, with Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel, and under his feet there appeared to be a pavement of sapphire as clear as the sky itself. And yet it did not stretch out his hand, yet he did not stretch out his hand against the nobles of the sons of Israel. And they saw God, and they ate, and they drank. Um, what an experience that had to have been. Uh, these, these Moses and these elders, uh, 70 elders go up on the mountain uh, to um, have a meal with God, that, that covenant meal with God. And it says they saw God. At least they saw what God allowed them to see. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, I was thinking about the scripture. It's been a, a, many years ago that, uh, uh, that I accepted Christ as, as my Lord and Savior. And although I did not see God, I was certainly overwhelmed by his presence that night that I got on my knees and, and asked to receive Christ Jesus. 
And I, I can just imagine how overwhelming it must have been for these people to be in the presence of God uh, on this day. Uh, and we see this meal together uh, that they had with God there on the mountain, uh, this covenant meal. And, and um, it was a celebration, of course, of the covenant promises. And it was, it was that final act of ratifying the covenant. It was that time to commune with God because now they had a relationship uh, with God himself. And, uh, and it, was just a, it was just a great demonstration of that special relationship that God wanted to, to sit down and, and have that meal uh, if, together, if you will. Uh, and, and I thought about Jesus. And what did Jesus do at the Passover meal? He, he, he ate a meal with his disciples. And as he, was, as he was laying that foundation for the new covenant that was coming, um, and, and so there's that spiritual reason why you and I as, as, as Baptists, as, as Christians, um, love to fellowship and have a meal together. It's, it's instilled in us by the Spirit uh, to, have, to share a meal as a covenant people. Uh, and then we see in uh, chapter 12, uh, verses 12 through 18, let's read that together. Um, now the Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and remain there, and I will give you the stone tablets with the law and the commandment which I have written for their instruction. So Moses arose with Joshua, his servant, and Moses went up to the mountain of God. But to the elders, he said, wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and her are with you. Uh, whoever has a legal matter, let him approach them. Then Moses went up to the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. And the, on the seventh day, he called to Moses from the midst of the cloud, and to the, and to the eyes of the sons of Israel, the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire on the mountaintop. Moses entered the midst of the cloud as he went up to the mountain, and Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. So after this, this meal with God uh, that ratified the covenant, God then calls Moses back up on the mountain uh, with him. Uh, he, and, and at this time, he's going to give Moses the Ten Commandments, those two tablets. And he's going to, he's going to, he's going to write the, the commandments on those tablets with his very finger. And that's reflected in Exodus 31, verse 18. So these are not man's ideas. These are, these are God's commands. And he's going to, he's going to write them with his very hand. And, and this time we see that, that Moses takes Joshua with him. And that's that same Joshua, uh, that's going to take over as the leader of Israel uh, when Moses dies. He's going to be he's going to be the man that actually takes Israel across the, the, the Jordan River into Canaan, into the promised land, that same obedient uh, Joshua. So it's not by not by accident that Joshua happens to be with Moses at this time. And we see that that this meeting on the mountain between God and Moses is going to last for a long time, 40 days and 40 nights. And and, uh, and that's going to carry us up into chapter 32. And, and, and it's not going to be until chapter 32, verse 7 or 8, that Moses even comes down with the Ten Commandments. So he's going to be up there for a long time. And, and, and we see that He's going to uh, be in that, uh, uh, that, up on that mountain. And when he goes up on that mountain, he's going to be in the Shekinah uh, glory cloud of God. And, 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 and that's, as, as we read, the, the, the onlookers saw that as that consuming fire. And, and we saw that same consuming fire in chapter 19, uh, where the Israelites uh, saw that consuming fire as, as Moses spoke verbally to them and gave them the Ten Commandments, and they had fear. Uh, they had a great reverence for God, and that's exactly what God intended to instill upon them so that they would keep his commandments. Uh, so we see that glory cloud. It's there on the mountain, and Moses is, is, is entering into the presence of God, and he's there for uh, 40 days and 40 nights. And it's no coincidence it's 40 days and 40 nights. That's exactly the days and the number of days and nights that Jesus was in the wilderness. Just like Moses in the wilderness on Mount Sinai, Jesus was in the wilderness just prior to him being tempted by the devil, just prior to him beginning his earthly ministry. He was in, uh, in, in, in the wilderness alone with God for 40 days and 40 nights. And what did we see Jesus doing in Matthew uh, uh, chapter 4? During that time, he was fasting. He was fasting. But listen, when we look at when we look at Moses here in Exodus, uh, if we look at Exodus thirty four twenty eight, what do we find? Uh, it tells us that Moses did not eat bread or drink water while he was on the mountain with God. Hmm. How about that? You know uh, what? What a great way to get alone with God and to hear from God by putting everything aside by fasting 
in prayer. And that's what we saw with Jesus Christ. That's what we see right here uh, with, with Moses. And while Moses fasted, was fasting, uh, God provided the Ten Commandments. But God provided more than the Ten Commandments. He also provided uh, the, the requirements, the instructions for worship. And we're going to see that uh, in, our, in our next lesson as we go into chapter 25. We're going to see those instructions, those very detailed instructions, those detailed blueprints that, that Moses receives. But uh, as we're running out of time, I, I want to close today with some scripture uh, from uh, the, the writer of Hebrews. And uh, in Hebrews chapter 13, uh, in verse 20, uh, I want to close there today. If I can find that in my Bible, the pages are sticking together. Here we go. In uh, Hebrews 13, verse 20 and 21. Now the God of peace, who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant, even Jesus our Lord, equip you in every good thing to do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Listen, guys, we've been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. We've entered into a covenant relationship with Jesus. And Jesus fully equips us to go out into the world and do his will. And I pray even in this time, and what better time, uh, with this coronavirus uh, that's, that's surrounding us, with people who are living in fear, uh, what better time for us to, to, to be a people that uh, uh, displays that hope that we have in Jesus Christ, to be that light of the world, uh, to be a people that now has been forced out of the building, out of the church building, into the world. Uh, and even in our quarantine, to be able to reach out to loved ones because there's a lot of people out there, guys, a lot of friends and family members that you have that I have uh, that are, are, are feeling kind of hopeless right now. And, God, we, and guys, we can give them that hope of Jesus Christ. I pray that we do that. I, I pray that uh, we will stay the course, uh, guys, that uh, we will uh, uh, be in the Word of God, that we'll be in prayer, that we'll be fasting, uh, that God, that we will allow God to use us in this very special time. Thank you for being with me. Let's close in prayer. Father, I thank you, God. I thank you that uh, we have the truth of your word. God, I thank you that uh, in your word, I can see that we have entered in, or we can see that we have entered into a covenant relationship with you through the blood of Christ. We live in a very, uh, in a great time in, a, in, the, in, in, in the gospel, uh, in the church age, in the, in the age of grace, God. And uh, God, that, the, that Jesus Christ has already shed that blood at Calvary. And all we had to do is simply by faith put, uh, put our faith in him. And uh, God, those of us who call ourselves Christians have done just that. And God, I pray that now, Lord, that uh, God, you would, uh, uh, God, just, uh, God, strengthen us, embolden us, God at this time to be to be the real church, uh, to go out into this world, Lord, even from our home, to go out through social media, through through the telephone, Lord, uh, and reach those, God, who are so desperately, so desperately in need of answers. And God, you have that answer, and his name is Jesus, and it's in his name that we pray. Amen.